Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is News Feed Now. Good Thursday, everyone. Green Day. If you're out there watching, I just want to make sure you're awake because September's over. It is October 1st. I'm Hillary Hunt, and this is New Seed Now, a show where we're going to take a look at all those stories creating a buzz online. Gosh, that was a bad joke. But you know what stinks? is a skunk in Massachusetts that found itself in a real predicament and it was all caught on camera. Check this out. Tweaksbury officer Eric Hanley rolled up on this little buddy who had his head stuck in a plastic container. Oh no. And of course that officer has to protect and serve. So he jumped into action and of course the first time couldn't get that plastic off that little stinker. But you know, keep trying, keep trying. Second time he gets it off. Just wait for it. He's going to do it. He's going to help the skunk. Oh, buddy, that always stinks when they get stuck like that. But he helped him out and he got away without smelling bad, too, which is pretty awesome. And over in the Midwest, we all say it. I know I said it. I'm never getting on TikTok, but I did. And a Michigan native promised his friends he would never start using the popular social media app TikTok. But recently, he broke that promise after going through what he described as the worst pain of his life. Here's Teresa Weekly. Promise, my friend, I would never make a TikTok video. Val Jones kept that promise even through most of quarantine. And you'd never know it from his smile or his moves. But these videos show Val during what he describes as the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. Couldn't find the fire extinguisher. He had a freak accident in the kitchen, a grease fire. So I try to take it by hand and throw it outside and when I was throwing it outside I fell down the stairs to go outside and it just got all over. Val had burns over 19 percent of his body. He is one of a kind for sure. Jennifer Earhart was one of the nurses who cared for him during his more than 40 day stay at Spectrum Butterworth Hospital in Grand Rapids. Some of the burns were so severe that those nerve endings just get completely fried off and so I think the pain is just constant. Val was already doing these dances and putting on a show. The nurses encouraged him to record it. He was in so much pain, and um, but he would still laugh, and he would still call me in his room and make stupid jokes. Val says he's learned his lesson in the kitchen. But I will not be cooking anymore. <laughs> I plan on just going out to lunch and dinner. He's also learned what a difference his attitude can make from all the messages he's getting from strangers. What's going on out there in the world, it's, it's a lot, and they tell me every day that I'm inspiring them, and so that's what makes me happy, and that's why I like to tell my friends, you know, when they're going through problems, you remember happiness is a choice, just keep going and keep smiling. I love that. Happiness is a choice. Let's bring in Teresa from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I like to say everyone has a love hate relationship with TikTok, but he has found <laughs> quite the community and such a positive attitude, too. It's it, funny how he promised he would never get on that. I think I've heard that promise from a lot of people, but his reason for doing it is pretty incredible. I also think it's pretty incredible. He was already doing all of these things before he discovered TikTok, but probably didn't realize the reach that he could have if he just embraced this new social trend. It's pretty awesome, and you just never know who you're going to reach. You know, he said he has hundreds of thousands of people messaging him now, and, you know, you never know when someone's going to be scrolling on there and need his uplifting message, and it's an uplifting story. I mean, to come back from that injury, that grease fire, that's some scary stuff. I mean, what was he telling you about that pain that had to be excruciating when you look at him in the hospital? You'll notice in the video and the pictures, you never see him not smiling. So that's why I had to get out of the nurse the kind of pain that he was actually experiencing. Um, and I, I don't think that anyone who hasn't ex gone through it themselves will ever be able to really understand it. But he did such a good job of covering that and staying positive. And the medical staff said that really helped him in his recovery. And I think it helped a lot of other people, even who were just on his floor and then beyond who saw his stuff on Instagram and TikTok. 
Love it. Love that message. He's also spreading a lot of joy. Thanks so much, Teresa and Grand Rapids for us. What a great story and glad he can bring that positivity to TikTok. Turning to some more serious news in California. It's hot, it's dry, it's windy, and that's increasing the risk of those fires spreading. Look at this. A red flag warning is currently in effect for many areas of that state. Like I said, the winds combined with that low humidity, making it really difficult to combat and contain the glass fire, which started in Napa County wine country on Sunday day has now grown to 51,000 acres by Thursday with only 2% containment. This is also causing a lot of poor air quality throughout the bay. And time is running out for 32,000 airline employees at America and United. American Airlines plans to begin furloughing 19,000 employees starting today. That's when that federal aid to airlines ends. That aid requires airlines to keep their employees. Now, as many seats continue to go unfilled during the pandemic, American says it must lay. It must offset those with buyouts, early retirements, and of course, unpaid or partial paid leaves. The airlines have been negotiating with the government for more federal aid, but so far, that's failed to produce a new deal. Fort Worth based American Airlines currently employs more than 140,000 people. United has also indicated that it's going to need to furlough 12,000 workers. Tough times for so many people. 837,000 Americans actually filed for unemployment claims. That's just last week as those layoffs continue. The latest figures released by the Labor Department today show that the number of people filing for jobless benefits has actually dropped by 36,000 from the previous week, but still a lot of people need help. Millions of Americans are facing unemployment with vastly diminished since that expiration of the $600 a week federal benefits this summer. A lot of that because of the coronavirus, but the coronavirus pandemic, as you can imagine, has changed so many aspects of life, how we live here on Earth. But let's talk about space. NASA administrator telling Congress it is yet to impact the agency's mission in space. Washington correspondent Jesse Turner reports on efforts this year to keep astronauts on track and what further funding could come from Congress. This is about American leadership. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said the pandemic isn't slowing the agency's mission to land the first woman and next man on the moon as early as 2024. We're moving rapidly towards that. Fire. Bridenstine told lawmakers rocket testing and spacecraft construction for the Artemis program are still on track with an even bigger target in mind. That accelerates our path to Mars. Bridenstine credited CARES Act funding for keeping things on track, but stressed the program will need $28 billion over the next four years to launch. Congress hasn't approved that spending yet. Lawmakers recently bypassed new appropriation bills with a continuing resolution, avoiding a possible government shutdown until December. That's never ideal, but the uh, COVID-19 pandemic pretty much dictated that. Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker asked Bridenstine what would happen to missions like the Artemis program if Congress doesn't act. If we get to February of 2021 without an appropriation, that's going to really put the brakes on our ability to achieve a moon landing. Bridenstine told Washington Senator Maria Cantwell, major missions like this build the future. The best thing NASA can do for encouraging people to go into STEM is inspire them. But the clock is ticking, and Congress is currently prioritizing issues on the ground over outer space. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Thank you, Jesse. Now, this is a story a lot of people are watching. Audio recordings from the grand jury in the Breonna Taylor case should be released on Friday. They were supposed to be released yesterday, but the judge approved the attorney general's request for an extension. The grand jury audio recordings were told are more than 20 hours long. A grand juror in the case actually filed a court motion calling for the audio and transcripts to be released and for permission to actually speak freely about that case. On a lighter note, Walmart rolling out a new look across the country at its super centers. The new look includes updated signage, encouraging customers to download and use that Walmart app. It's going to help guide you through the story. We all get lost in that store sometimes. It's so big. Welcome to the digital age. Walmart is also optimizing product layout and focusing on contact list, checkout and payment. And the queen of country herself, Miss Dolly Parton, announced the release for her new Netflix movie, Christmas on the Square. It's all about a bitter woman, not like Dolly, who plans to sell her small town regardless of the impacts it will have on the people living there. That movie will be released on Netflix November 22nd. Mark your calendars. 
And guess what? You can get an early dose of Holiday Dolly tomorrow when she releases her new album titled perfectly Holly Dolly Christmas. I love it. And you know what else I love? Stories that just melt your heart in the South. One Arkansas seven year old has an extra chromosome and an extra big personality. I love him. He's become a regular at a local Sonic and it's not because those awesome slushies. Claire Kreitz shows us how each trip to the fast food chain turns into quite the party. Check it out. Oh, we turn the corner at the stoplight. What do you do? You say, Woo! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty normal reaction for any seven year old as their car turns into America's drive in. <laughs> for Drake Webster, he comes for the slushes <laughs> and, of course, the cheese sticks. But there's one thing that sets this Sonic apart from the rest. This all started one afternoon when Drake's mom brought him here for an after school treat. I was hopping out the window, hey, hey, I was just like, hey. Marquise Jones was bringing out his order, and Drake had another request that wasn't on the menu. You know, he was asking me to dance with him, so I'm like, okay, well, let's dance, Drake, you know. Now, every time Drake pulls up, they turn the pavement into a dance floor. Everybody stops what they're doing just to go out there <laughs> to speak with them. They have to have the dance party. <laughs> For Drake's parents, it brings tears to their eyes watching these employees take a little time out of their day just to make their son smile. People these days don't show a lot of niceness, so it just means a lot that they see that he's giving them love and they're giving it right back. It's just enough to melt your heart, so it's pretty awesome. It may be hidden by the masks, but these employees look forward to Drake's visit just as much. Your bad day just goes out the door. Or maybe even a little more. It touched my heart. It actually makes me smile every time he comes. Oh, that kiss at the end. Let's bring in Claire from Little Rock, Arkansas. Claire, you <laughs> know that I personally love Drake. He's one of my favorites, but just tell everyone about his personality because it is so amazing. I love that little dude. His personality, not shy at all. He'll talk to anybody, and that's how this all got started is he's hanging out the window, you know, saying, hey, hey, dance with me, and all the Sonic workers just love him. And Claire, I got to know, did did you dance with him a little? I know you've got some moves. Did he show you <laughs> any of his moves? You, you get in there, hop in on the dance party? I did not hop in on the dance party because, I mean, he would show me up. <laughs> There's just no way. He's so good. I can't even compare to him. And then also talk about the message from his parents. You know, his parents are so awesome. They get him out in the community. He makes so many friends. But talk about the message from his parents about just spreading that joy and doing what you can, especially during these times, you know, during the times of COVID-19. It's so tough. That's exactly it. You know, they said that he has actually had a tough time during COVID just because he likes to be out and he likes to hug everybody. And he can't show that as much, but he's still doing what he can to show his love. And, and for his mom, she said seeing that love being shown back to him is just the most incredible feeling. And shout out to those employees, too. They were breaking it down. They're having a good time. The best story all day, Claire. Thanks so much. Love it. Love Drake and love seeing people bringing a smile to other people's faces. And check this out. Talk about creative. A Virginia couple found the answer to that socially distant trick or treat. No, they're not telling the kids to go long, tossing them the candy bars. Chris and Nicole and Roanoke came up with the idea of a candy slide after they weren't happy with just tossing the treats off their porch. They went to a local hardware store, got some some pipe. And they made it themselves. They even painted it orange, Halloween themed. And, you know, after testing it on their own kids, they posted it to Facebook and it's gotten a lot of like and shares. They're hoping other people are going to pick up on that idea, too. That's pretty cool. Chris, you know, maybe he should be an engineer in his future. It looks like a good idea. Smart guy there. And, you know, they maybe they just don't have an arm like I do. I, Tom Brady taught me how to throw the candy. So, you know what? Get out there, get creative so kids can still enjoy Halloween. That's all the time we have for our show. We're going to be right back here tomorrow. Same place, same time. Happy October 1st, guys. Make it a great one. You're one day away from the weekend. Bye.